All right, so here's a follow-up video for the trailer. Um, it's been a couple of years and we've done some new things to it. We're at Big Bear. We just finished up a couple of nights in Sequoia National Park with the four kiddos. They did great. And so uh, with four kids now, three of them go up in the tent, which is where my wife and I used to love being, but it's the kids now. And we've gone to one of these core instant pop-ups that take like no time to set up. Um, I timed it today. It was two minutes to set up and we were five minutes in uh, to inflating the blowout mattress using the 2000 watt inverter. And so it's a uh, pretty slick, you know, it doesn't feel as fun as being up in a rooftop tent, but uh, it works really well for us. So just like uh, before, same electrical setup here. Uh, we did add a USB-C 65 watt plug for fast charging phones and specifically 65 watts for running the Starlink Mini, which we'll show you later. I view it. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Um, same kitchen setup, it works great. It's a slide out uh, with a 12 volt water pump and uh, you can hear the water heater going in the background so we can do dishes later. Added max tracks on the sides, not really for function. Um, we don't really do the type of off-roading that uh, requires max tracks. The primary purpose is to act as a sidewall. Um, just in the last week, added that and then added this cage up front. Um, so between the cage up front and the max tracks on the side, and then those packout boxes off of the rear, ratchet strapped in, um, it creates a really nice space for stuff. So like we put the table, all the chairs, um, the blow up mattress, the tent, uh, everything up in that space now, and it stays really secured. Uh, we've been doing the front runner utensil kit. Uh, it doesn't come with enough sets for as many kids as we've got. And we didn't really like the forks and spoons. So we pulled those out and added a bunch of our own, um, but it's a nice easy way to keep it organized. Uh, for the trip, we set up a new electrical system that I'm really, really happy with, really proud of. Um, took advantage of some Amazon Prime Day deals and got three of the Lightime 100 amp hour minis. Um, fabricated up a battery mount at the shop and uh, a crossbar, the guys at the shop uh, welded all that up for me. It was really nice of them and uh, installed, uh, because they're the lithium iron phosphates, installed a new shore charger, so that's an AC to DC, uh, 30 amp, installed a new solar controller um, that can go up to, I think it's 100 volts and 30 amps, don't quote me on that. And then we still have the Renogy DC to DC 20 amp um, down there that uh, works really well. So that goes into this Anderson plug that then goes into the back of the Sequoia right here. And we have a plug here for solar input. There's your shore input. Um, there's the water. So the water tank is still there. Water heater, like I said, is running. Outdoor shower. Um, still have the toolbox on this side, which works out really well. And trash roo. Uh, with the bumper. We don't run two gas tanks anymore. Quite frankly, we don't need a single gas tank. Um, I've, I've found in the, I don't know, 15 years of overlanding and off-roading, I've, I've only needed gas once and needed is maybe a strong word for it. However, we have needed water. And so we typically use hose water for that and we use that for showers and dishwashing. And then we bring this scepter that fits in that slot for drinking water, um, which works out really nicely. So I'm thinking about buying a second one of those so we can carry 10 gallons of water. You know, before I would say our 200 amp hour lead acid batteries were our weak spot in terms of how long we could stay out because I didn't have a good solar setup for it. But after running this trip, this 300 amp hour batteries plus the solar, I've got 260 watt Renogy um, panels. It was unbelievable. Uh, it's it's 100 self-sustaining. I don't need to worry about power ever again. Um, to the point that I was able to charge up um, because we didn't have good solar at uh, at the campsite we were at in Sequoia. Turns out a national park known for its giant trees doesn't offer very good shade. Um, so that's a Starlink Mini with a 200 watt anchor panel. But that's the C1000 the Anchor Solix C1000 and. Uh, it does really well. I was able to charge that. It's over a thousand watt hours. I was able to charge that from empty to full yesterday using the 2000 watt inverter. And uh, 
the batteries went from, I think, I think our lithium batteries after like three or four days were at, I don't know, 85% and it only dropped it down to like 57%. So uh, they're super stout, works really, really well. Um, no issues there. The Starlink Mini's actually been great. I should probably do a video on just that. But uh, it's uh, the C1000 with the 200 watt panels and the Starlink Mini is definitely a 100% self-sustaining internet setup. Uh, oh, we also added the 230 uh, awning. It's their newest version. It's the 270 degree. It's got these lights in here. They're actually really nice. The poles block them when they're up. And so I just kind of slide it over and that, that seems to work fine if you don't want them down. Um, and we've also been running a projector screen with the kids and I picked up a Nebula Capsule 3. It's a laser projector and uh, it works really well. The speaker is not great. Um, the Bose SoundLink speaker can connect to it via Bluetooth. It's a much better sound quality. So I'm actually looking at getting the Anchor Soundcore Boom 2, I think they just came out with, that I can tether via Bluetooth to that Nebula to offer a much better sound experience. Um, but it's been great. So if you have any questions, let me know. I would love to uh, do a follow-up video if there's anything else that you wanted me to check out that I didn't address. Thanks.